Hey, I'm Les with Judson Vacuum Systems, and we finally got finished with Dan Markley's uh, Genesis uh, diesel unit. It's the DXT. He's had it a couple years, and uh, as you know, uh, Power Clean is no longer building the units anymore, and he was having some problems, issues with the unit. He finally decided to come down here to Greenville. He's from uh, Missouri. He finally brought it down to me a couple months ago and left me his rig. I'd like for you to see how nice the truck is. We're going to do a walkthrough of the machine, the modifications we did to the machine, and talk about the performance and the extended life of the engine that we've uh, provided for the machine. Also, the unit's going to use about half the amount of fuel it used to. Uh, I'll go over that in detail, but I would like for you to look at Dan's truck. It's really nice. It's a, um, a Sprinter van. I'll stand back and, and look at it. And, uh, it's actually a, a showpiece as far as the interior. It's really nice the way it's detailed out. Now I'll just go ahead and show you the inside of the unit. You know the original machine was a heat exchange unit and we uh, pulled the unit out and we have stripped the machine down and made it very simple and increased the heat performance from what it was. Uh, unfortunately with heat exchangers when you go high flow and you're cleaning uh, commercial carpet cleaning they, they will not sustain high temperature. <clears throat> Plus it had it was issues with exhaust diverters and limit switches and stuff we have eliminated. Uh, we also have made the machine where it's easy to get access all the components that I'm going to show you get Jack to um, get Jack to uh, zoom in here and I'll show you how much easier it is to work on the unit but it still looks about the same as far as the dash the, the major major changes is what's in the very back and uh, the um, so Jack go ahead and just come right in here and you can see the access here how much easier it is to access the engine uh, and to get to the belts and the pressure pump but uh, you could not get to the pressure pump at all and it's just right there in the open um, <clears throat> the unit is now strictly propane heated so now <clears throat> the engine does not need to be running at high rpms to produce heat um, the the main thing with the heat was that when uh, you go high flow, it just won't, on commercial applications, it would not maintain high temperature. And uh, it just started issues, with, plus the parts were no longer available. So he decided, he had saw the video that I had done on the uh, Blue Line thermal wave where we converted it. And we got that machine running at just above idle. So that engine should last forever. This engine, uh, with the vibration issues it had, it looks like about half throttle is going to be about right. So the blower, the blower was uh, a 850 CFM blower, uh, which is you know the 59, the 59, and the uh, CFM it was 850 CFM, and <laughs> and. <laughs> And the relief valve was basically bypassing all there because, you know, when the one's down on a carpet, it can only get about 200 CFM at the most because it's semi-stopped up with wet carpet. So it was bypassing, you know, what, uh, 650 CFM. So we've, slot, we've, we've lowered RPM to where the... Um, uh, the CFM's probably about 650 now, and uh, so the, as far as I, it's just not going to relieve as much air, but it, it, the performance at the wand's going to be just the same, you know. So I'm going to start it up and let you see uh, where the RPM was when it was designed to make the heat, uh, because that's what the engine was on there for, and the reason that big blower was on there was not to have more vacuum to clean carpet, it was actually on there to load that engine to produce heat. Well, the machine is no longer heating with the engine, so we don't. We just don't need all that performance. So I'm going to start it up, and we are going. I'm going to show you what their recommended RPM was, and then what mine is once he's going to get it uh, get it back. That's just idling there. That's just idling. Now, as you can see, that's just sitting there. Idling. Get up 
to the recommended RPM. The extended life of this engine is going to be amazing once we, uh, once he starts using it, because uh, half throttles half twice the uh, life of the engine. Uh, it's using half the amount of fuel. Uh, but even at half throttle, like I say, I would say it's around 600 CFM, which, like I say, 200s often go through the wand. Um, this machine will now maintain 240 degrees on a greeny high flow wand, and that's under commercial car cleaning conditions. To me, personally, that's too hot, 240 on the high flow, but it'll do it. Um, I would turn it down to about 220. But uh, we're going to walk around back now, and I'll show you some differences we did. We've um, pretty neat how we did the pump, plumbing of the pump. It no longer has a float tank on it, and that's the heater burning. Anyway, uh, we draw directly out of the water tanks. Now, you'll see it has two water tanks in there, and... Uh, And what's so neat about it, we're drawing directly out of one water tank, and the other one is over here, and they've got a crossover pipe. And so the pump, instead of having the little float tank, we just made that one water tank be a big giant float tank. So now it's circulating cold water. Now the pump only pumps cold water now. The regulator operates cold. That extends the life of those two components. And now it's circulating 100 gallons or 90 gallons of cold water. So you can imagine there's no way there's going to be any heat build up like if somebody forgot to turn the pump off doing a flood work uh, it would just circulate all that cold water and never cause an issue so let's walk around back and let me just show you the inside of the truck how nice it is let me open this up it's really nice uh, power clean did an outstanding job i mean amazing job with the workmanship of this uh inside uh, just it, it's really something else the way it's detailed out it's got an electric reel here and uh, got a water softener right there we mounted the heater right here and we put the propane tank underneath the back if you can see that under the rear That propane will last about, uh, holds about 12 gallons. Uh, it burns about a half gallon an hour, so that'll give us 24 hours of trigger time before he needs to refill that tank. So, I mean, it's a good bit of time. Uh, let me, let's see, Jack, you want me to hold the camera and you get in, or can you get in? Just go, go ahead. Can you see is there enough lighting in here? Let's just go right there. The side of the machine, well, they got shelving everywhere in here. And here's the other tank. So it's got twin tanks and they're connected together with a crossover tube. And see, so here's where we're drawing out of the tank now. We added these hoses one's the bypass line, one's the pump inlet, cold water. Uh, you can see how easy it is to work on the machine now. It's, it's pretty amazing how much we've opened it up to get to the pressure pump. Pump's pumping cold water down only. You can get to the engine good now. There's nothing electrical on this machine other than the shutoff in the recovery tank and the starter for the starter and uh, uh, the glow plugs to start the engine. The, the fuel pump on the engine's mechanical. Um, it's not that hot in this vehicle. And uh, he, they've made shelving all inside this thing to hold every little cre crevice has got places for storage in here. A lot of people wanted me to show them the inside of this truck. It's insulated. So a little small heater will keep it from freezing. He's got a nice fan there that's remote control to power ventilate the vehicle. But the vehicle, does, I mean, We've been running it pretty good, 
and and the um, it's just not a lot of heat built up because see the radiator is drawing fresh air in and that's semi pressurizing the whole vehicle so there's a draft of air coming out anyway and it's taking the exhaust of this heater out so uh, the wall is not hot the inside of the vehicle is not that bad at all I'm real surprised uh, but Dan it will be here in the morning and uh, to drive this home so I thought I'd make a little video on uh, the final product here we finally got him reinstalled and uh, we'll get Dan to give us a progress report once he gets it back and put some time on it but uh, um, I think what we did is save Dan a lot of money because he was kind of in a fix where he could not get repair parts and it was costing it wasn't maintaining the performance he wanted anyway and so we've stripped everything put common parts you can find it in auto parts or, or whatever you know local parts as we can and got him pumping cold water and got him more heat than he had before and so uh, like I say we'll have to buy propane now but uh, there's a lot of issues that we uh, dealt with propane we have it where you can fill your own bottles with uh, forklift uh, tanks and you can actually have your own fill bottle at your own facility a lot of guys are doing that so when you buy propane that way it's a lot cheaper because it does not have um, road tax because you're not powering the vehicle with it so um, anyway we finally got the diesel done and we have uh, two Hydromaster 421s a 427 an Apex and a surprise machine coming so uh, quite a few guys are, are seeing the value of us re-engineering and saving that uh, investment now, Dan had forty four thousand dollars in this system here plus the van and he was having issues uh, he had only 1800 hours on the engine uh, running half throttle there's no telling how long it'll last now and it's nice and quiet now and uh, so we'll see um, I think uh, I think he is now going to be able to keep this unit for quite a few years now so uh, only time will tell but anyway thanks I'm trying not to make the tape too long but uh, this is less and uh, I'll make some more stuff later thanks